Hi everyone, this is Kay Dart in the Fastener Lab and today I just want to talk about how you can edit your photos for your laser engraving. Um, <clears throat> this is our example image right here and let's just say I just download, this is just an image I downloaded online and let's just say I just put it right into the laser <clears throat> just have it engrave on some plywood this is what we're looking at. This is what we're going to get. So original image and this is what it engraves on the plywood. Now we can see there's some good detail in some areas, but in other areas it's really washed out. Uh, it's really it's been burned very deeply and we don't really get a whole lot of good detail and the image just doesn't look good on that plywood. Now at the top here, what you can also see is I engraved a uh, tonal test from pure white all the way to black. And you can see black kind of burns in very deeply, white almost none at all. And this is what you want to do if you're going to engrave on a material is to always do that test to take a grayscale and just burn engrave it in just to see what it does and see really what tones you can work with uh, and the biggest thing is right here it's mostly a dark image you can see that one side of this face is really dark um, and so that's why it's just burning it through and we're not really getting a whole lot of good detail and so you might need to edit your image so you can get something that you really want uh, the first thing that I'm going to look at here is I can see that really the tone is only in the range of 255 to roughly 180 or so. Anything after that is just going to be burned too much. It's just not going to show up. So I can go into Photoshop or another photo editing software and change that so I can get a better image. So in my original image up here, I'm going to come up to image, go into mode and change it to grayscale. And I'm just going to discard all of that color information. I don't really care. Now, the next thing is I can come up here to image, go to adjustments, and I'm going to change the levels. Now this is a histogram that's essentially showing you where all these pixels kind of land. And it makes sense. So half the image is white, the other half is black, and that's where a lot of the pixels end up. I can also change the output levels, so I can change it to a range of darkest to lightest. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is just move that output level all the way to roughly 180, because I'm just going to be working within that range. And you can see that the image has already lightened up. So the darkest parts of this image are now at that 180 level. Uh, what I can also do is I can change the midtones. So these little indicators over here, this is the darkest tones, these are the highlights, and this is the midtones. I can change that midtone if I want to sort of bring out an area a little bit more. So I can move this around. And what I don't want is I don't want too much contrast in either direction. I really want to balance it out. So I'm actually going to move it right about there just to make it a little even. So the dark area is lightened up a little bit, um, or the, the mid-tones have darkened up a little bit. Or, sorry, the mid-tones have lightened up a little bit. And then I can hit OK. Now let's say, OK, this looks good. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. And this is what I'll get just by adjusting the grayscale and the mid-tone levels. So I can zoom in here. And I can see that, okay, that the face is much more recognizable. There's more detail on the left side of the face. It's looking a lot better for sure. Um, but maybe I just want to adjust it a little bit more. Maybe I want to bring out more detail on the left side of the face. Also on the right side, it looks like you can barely see his ear. Uh, so we can adjust those uh, by using the burn and dodge tool, which is just like if you were in a dark room, you can overexpose one area or underexpose one area. So I'm gonna start with the dodge tool. I'm gonna change the scale, or actually, I'll keep this scale, because what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to sort of blend out 
that edge on the left hand side. Let's get rid of that. Make it white. Now in the upper left hand corner here you can change it to your soft brush or a brush with a hard edge. You can also change the scale right here. Uh, I was do 500 just to make it a little smaller. And the exposure, this is essentially you're changing the amount at which you're doing it. I would stay within the 50% range just so you're not overexposing too much and you can work to make it a nice clean or a nice smooth transition. I'm actually going to drop that down so I can these areas a little better. Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lighten up this side of the face. <coughs> and that's going to help bring it out a little bit going to help us get a little bit more detail. Not completely. Uh, and then that's looking good. So I'm going to then use the burn tool to actually bring out some details in the right side. Maybe make that eye a little darker. Same thing over here. Maybe the mouth. And a little bit goes a long way. So that's all we need to do right now. Um, and again, it, it takes time and experience to really get used to it. And let's see, where is, there we go. So this is an example of what the engraving looks like when you use the grayscale level adjustment, the burn and dodge tool. And so this one you can see here, I've actually, uh, dodged a little bit, or sorry, I do, 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 do. Do, yep, I dodged a little bit too much on the left hand side, so you can see the face is actually darkened up, but the ear on the right hand side looks a lot better, and the ear on the left hand side definitely looks better as well. If I compare it to the other one, where you can barely see the ear, um, so that's just an example of how you can manipulate and play with your image to make it a better engraving. And of course, again, you always want to start with the grayscale on a sort of a scrap piece of wood or a test piece of whatever it is you're working on. Uh, <clears throat> and from there, then you can bring your image into Rhino, uh, which I discussed a little bit in a different video. So I hope this works for you. If not, you can ask me in the lab, and I will see you there. All right, thanks. Bye-bye.